Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word, our two-year journey through the Bible. And today that journey takes us to Numbers chapter 6 and 7, verse 27 of chapter 6. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. When I was in high school, I first read the book, The Cost of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was the German pastor and theologian that went up against Adolf Hitler. Now, I've reread the book since then a few times. He understood that there was a cost to being a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, this book was first published in 1937, but it could not be more relevant to the church than it is today. Bonhoeffer wrote of cheap grace, that is, treating the grace of God as if it were a common thing. Now, let me quote from the book. Bonhoeffer said, quote, Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. Baptism without church discipline, communion without confession, absolution without personal confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. You see, commitment is costly. I mean, just look at God's commitment to us. It cost him his son. And this is what we see here in chapter 6 of, of Numbers. We look at the cost of Setting, being set apart in service unto God. Let's begin in verse 1 of chapter 6. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When either a man or a woman consecrates an offering to take the vow of a Nazarite to separate himself to the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and similar drink. He shall drink neither vinegar made from wine nor vinegar made from similar drink. Neither shall he drink any grape juice nor eat fresh grapes or raisins. All the days of his separation, he shall eat nothing that is produced by the grapevine, from seed to skin. All the days of the vow of his separation, no razor shall come upon his head until the days are fulfilled for which he separated himself to the Lord. He shall be holy. Then he shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he, is separate, that he separates himself to the Lord, he shall not go near a dead body. He shall not make himself unclean even for his father or his mother, for his brother or his sister when they die, because his separation to God is on his head. All the days of his separation he shall be holy to the Lord. So chapter 6 is all about the Nazarite vow. Now, what is that vow? Well, let's start with the word Nazarite. It's actually a verb. It means to be separate or to abstain. Now remember, the, in the entire nation, all of the children of Israel, were to be sanctified. That is, to be set apart unto God. And then the priests, they had even a greater call to be set, up, uh, set apart. And then the high priest, even more so. A Nazarite vow was a voluntary vow of consecration unto the Lord, generally taken by a non-priest. Now, a couple of examples of this from the Old Testament are uh, Samson. Of course, not the best example, but God did use him. And then there was Samuel. In, in the New Testament, we have John the Baptist. Uh, there were men, uh, these were all men that were used in, in incredible ways for, uh, for God. Now, there are three main requirements of a Nazarite vow that we just read. Number one, no wine or product of the vine. Now, this is obvious. They were not to be under the influence of wine, but rather to be only under the influence of the Holy Spirit. As Paul wrote in the Ephesians, to the Ephesians, he said, Be filled with the Spirit and not with wine. Uh, secondly, there was no cutting of the hair. Now, this was an outward sign, and it was a reminder of their vow. It was a form of accountability because others knew that they had taken that vow by their outward appearance, and so they were watching them. Number three is no contact with dead bodies, not to be spiritually defiled. Now, this was the same standard as we had for the high priest. Now, the vow could be temporary. It could be a month, could be two months, could be a year, or it could be for life. If temporary, once it was fulfilled, the person was to make an offering before the Lord. Let's look at that beginning in verse 13. Now, this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and he shall present his offering to the Lord, one male lamb in its first year without blemish as a burnt offering, one new lamb in its first year without blemish as a sin offering, a ram without blemish as a peace offering, a basket of unleavened bread, 
cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and their grain offering with their drink offerings. So stop and think about this for just a moment. Commitment to God is costly. Look at the offerings that were to be made. Number one, a sin offering, atonement for sin. A burnt offering, dedication and surrender to God. A grain offering, thanksgiving and praise. And a peace offering, fellowship and peace with God. I mean, these, these were costly. There is nothing cheap about God's grace, and there should be nothing cheap about our commitment in worship of Him. Now, let's go over to chapter 7. Some of you might recall um, back in the 90s, they started Wow Worship. Now, this was an annual release of the top Christian worship songs. And it was actually one of the most successful collections of uh, Christian music. I think it stopped a few years back. Back then, when it first started, it was on CDs. Each year, they would release a CD, and, and I, I bought them each year, and I would uh, listen to them. It was you know, Wow Worship. It was very descriptive. Well, today in Chapter 7, that's what we have. Wow, what worship. The leaders of the 12 tribes brought an offering to the tabernacle. Now, you'll recall that the first offering that was called that people brought to the tabernacle were materials to construct the tabernacle. This offering is given for the service of and worship in the tabernacle. So let's begin in verse 1 of chapter 7. Now it came to pass when Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle that he anointed it and consecrated it in all its furnishings, and the altar and all its utensils. So he anointed them and consecrated them. Then the leaders of Israel, the heads of their fathers' houses, who were, in, who were the leaders of the tribes, and over those who were numbered, made an offering. And they brought their offering before the Lord, six covered carts and twelve oxen, a cart for every two of the leaders, and for each one an ox, and they presented them before the tabernacle. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Accept these from them, that they may be used in doing the work of the tabernacle of meeting, and you shall give them to the Levites, to every man according to his service. Now, by the way, Numbers chapter 7, that right here that we're reading, is the second longest chapter in the Bible. A little bit of Bible trivia here. Second longest chapter in the Bible. Do you know what the first longest chapter is? Psalms 119. The longest is about the Word of God. The second longest chapter is about the worship of God. Pretty neat, huh? So the leaders of the 12 tribes brought an elaborate offering to the Lord, and they were all identical. And this lasted for 12 days, one each day. This was, the, as I said, the third time that they gave money for worship. All right, third time. You say, uh, you say well, I thought you said two. Right? The first time they gave money and articles of gold and precious things for what? You remember? The golden calf. The second was for the construction of the tabernacle, and the third here was for the service of the tabernacle. It, it is obvious that they truly plundered Egypt when they came out. I mean, nearly 400 years in back wages is what sustained them for 40 years in the desert and gave them the resources to launch the nation. It's pretty neat. One final point. Uh, look at the very last verse here in chapter 7, verse 89, okay? Now, when Moses went into the tabernacle of meeting to speak with him, that is God, he heard the voice of one speaking to him from above the mercy seat that was on the ark of the testimony from between the two cherubim. Thus he spoke to him. Notice God speaking to Moses above the mercy seat on the ark, which contained, the ark contained the Ten Commandments. There is mercy and truth. You see, that's where they meet. The mercy seat is above the truth, above the law. There is no mercy without truth. And in both, we hear and see God. So let me go back to, uh, actually, to chapter 6 as we close. All right, this is how I want to close. In verse 24 we have the blessing that Aaron spoke, the priestly blessing that he spoke. Um, and, and, and this is for you this morning, okay? Receive this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 
And so they shall put or invoke my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. The blessing comes from God. It is in his name as we receive the blessing from him. Father, thank you for the blessing that you have given to us. We thank you for Jesus and the salvation that we have, the forgiveness of sin. And Lord, we know that grace is not cheap. It is not cheap. It is very costly. Jesus gave his life to ransom us from our sin, to save us from our sin. May we not take your grace cheaply and treat it as a common thing. But Lord, may we revere you, may we fear you, and may we serve you with grateful hearts and, and just, Lord, may we worship you in, in an elaborate way, giving of ourselves to you as you have given so much to us. We continue to pray for the Holy Spirit to lead us on this journey in understanding your word and its application to our lives. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks again for being with me this morning. And until next time, keep standing on the word.